Hello, it's Dr. Clayton Simon from Marina Hills Animal Hospital. Uh, the video that you're about to watch is unusual for us at Marina Hills. Uh, when I meet with students or young people that are interested in veterinary medicine, uh, there's several things I share with them. One of them is that uh, being a small animal veterinarian is never routine. There's always something new or different that we get to do, and that's one of the things I love about my profession. Uh, the other, uh, or another thing I share, is that uh, as a veterinarian, we're always learning. There's always something new to learn. Even in uh, the same field, medicine evolves and changes. So we really need to be lifelong learners. Uh, this past week, I got to do something new I'd never done before. I did some research. I have a friend with a arowana fish. Uh, this particular fish comes from northern Australia, uh, and it had a, a curl to the cover on its gill. Uh, and so with some work and research and planning, we were able to successfully anesthetize the fish, do a minor surgical procedure and wake him up. And uh, he's actually behind me here swimming around back in his habitat. So it's pretty cool. Um, no, I'm not a fish doctor, uh, but it was great fun uh, to have the adventure of a new project. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so today our patient is an arowana fish. Uh, the problem is that his gill cover is flipped outward and we're going to repair that. Uh, to do it we're going to anesthetize the fish, we're going to surgically remove the uh, flipped gill cover, we're going to smooth the edge of the exposed bone, we're going to then if he's doing well take an x-ray because we all want to know what an arowana fish looks like on the inside and then we're going to wake him up. What I'd like to know his weight is because if we need to use rescue drugs we have the bath done over here. The way that we're going to anesthetize him is we have a concentrated solution of fish anesthesia here. Uh, and based on my research, we're going to start with 30 mils in 10 liters. We're going to give him three to five minutes. If he's not anesthetized, we're going to add 10 mils until he's anesthetized. The top end would be 100 mils in this volume. I'm sure he'll be asleep before we get to that. Once he's anesthetized, we're going to transfer him to our surgical suite which is next door to the anesthetic induction chamber, which are these lovely moistened sponges. We're gonna cover him with saran wrap to keep him moist, and I'm gonna do the surgical procedure right here. To keep him anesthetized in the surgical suite, we're gonna have him breathing his tank water with the anesthetic solution, which we're spiking with oxygen, because we have oxygen, why not? Um, if his depth of anesthesia is too low, too deep, then we're gonna reduce the amount of anesthetic water with tank water, non-anesthetic solution tank water. Um, if his heart rate, if his respiratory rate is too low when we've switched to come full tank water with no anesthesia, we're gonna stimulate his respiration with Dopram, which we've already got the math calculated over here. If he's in cardiac arrest, Shane is going to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR on the fish. <laughs> We're going to give epinephrine, which we have the math calculator over here. Not expecting any problems, but the best anesthesia is the well-prepared anesthesia. Um, and then when the procedure's done, again, if he's doing well, we're going to transfer him to radiology, keeping him anesthetized by moving our surgical suite on top of the tray so that we can get a film. Uh, and then he's going to go back in the, uh, the aquarium here to recover before he eventually goes back in his transfer tank to go back home where he came from. That's the plan. Any questions? Yes. Is that 